Okay, we're gonna get started in just a moment. Hey everyone, so we are gonna get started in just a moment and hopefully it gave you a warning that we are recording. What I'll do is I will do my presentation part and I will um, turn off the recording at the end I'm very comfortable asking questions. Oh, we've got a couple more people coming in. Everybody see if you can locate the chat right now so that you can also type questions there. Feel free to put questions in the chat as I go through um, my talk today. And or if you can't find the chat, go ahead and write it down on a piece of paper. Um, and actually, if you have a journal or a piece of paper and a pen nearby, go ahead and grab those because we're gonna do a little bit of journaling in the beginning. I'm just gonna turn off my music before we start. Okay, so I'm not gonna look back and forth at the chat while I'm doing the slides. Um, Kelly, if you don't mind, feel free to unmute yourself and tell me if there's an urgent question um, sitting in the chat. And if not, we'll answer all the questions at the end. So we'll go through until around 1240 and then we'll have the last 20 minutes to go through questions if that sounds good to everybody. So here are my slides. Okay, so first I just wanted to mention, let me share my screen. For those of you who don't know, I'm Kate and I am the owner of the Functional Medicine Center. Recognize a lot of you here um, as my patients. I see my cousin is here, yay! I'm so excited. So um, we've done this happy food reset about, I think this is actually our fifth time it started when I took a course at the University of Western States on detox. Um, Deanna Minnick was my professor there, my teacher. Um, I'm still in touch with her because she's just a, a wonderful person, a beautiful teacher. And I'm gonna give you her website at the end because a lot of what I'm saying comes from a couple of her books that she's written on eating food that is the colors of the rainbow, whatever foods you prefer, so you can kind of customize this for you. Um, and eating mostly plants, but certainly you can have lots of non-plants as well, but mostly plants um, and just eating not too much, kind of eating what feels good. And we're gonna talk a little bit about some principles that may sound a little bit outside the box, um, but Deanna, like me, is also a yoga teacher. So I would ask today, if you are willing, just try to keep an open mind um, some of these principles are a little bit of Ayurvedic medicine, um, a little bit of Chinese medicine. So they may sound a little bit different. And if it doesn't work for you, just leave it. You know what I mean? Um, don't worry about fitting everything in, but take from this talk today what does work for you. And our goal is to get through 14 days of eating the rainbow, eating as clean as we can without stressing ourselves out. So you know, historically our society is, it pushes us a lot and we're very hard on ourselves. And a lot of times when we realize our own self-talk, it can be negative and it can be harsh. The goal with this food reset is that it's happy and it feels light. And we kind of pick the low hanging fruit, so to speak, and pick the things that work for us, the things that are the easiest. Um, no one here is going to care or kick you out if you do something wrong. In fact, they're really, really is wrong to do it. We're just really glad that we're all here together to do this together. So the value here is that we're all helping each other and supporting each other. If you're not already on the WhatsApp group, we'll try to get you on the WhatsApp group at the end of the talk today. Um, okay, so I also put Lauren's um, name here and let me see if I can 
temporarily move your faces up so I can see my slides. There we go. So Kelly is our wellness coach, Kelly Price. Um, she's on the call with us today. And Kelly is also going to lead the next three meetings that are coming to support everyone as we go through this. I'm always here and can answer questions. And Kelly's done this food reset, I think at least three times. Um, and Kelly was also a patient of mine. She's a trainer. She's a degree in psychology. Kelly's just great at looking at the whole person and helping you work towards the goals that you have in mind, right? Um, Lauren is our office manager. And so I'm kind of the ideas person and Lauren's the one that actually makes everything happen. <laughs> so she's essential, right? So if you have a question about logistics, you didn't get an email, you didn't get a form, something you're missing, definitely reach out to Lauren and she'll make sure to fix that. Um, and then Kristen is our nurse practitioner and Kristen, you're on the call today too, great. So Kristen joined our team in May and it's been great having her here. Um, just like me, she's um, doing functional medicine in the clinic. So if you see her for one of your follow-up visits, you can also tell her how this food reset went. Um, and that's our Facebook, the Functional Medicine Center of Durham. And our Instagram is primitive.family. Originally my company was Primitive Family PLLC and then we ended up um, filing a DBA. So technically we are the Functional Medicine Center, but Primitive Family was the original name for our company. So, okay, that's us. Let's see if I can advance my slide. Oh no, there we go. So again, this is 14 days of eating the rainbow. Um, what that means for you may be de very different than what it means for me and that's okay. There is not a one size fits all way to eat. There's not a, a good way to eat or a bad way to eat. Um, I think we need to get away from using terms like that. What I find is that there are foods that are good for us at specific times of our life. And what's really important is that we as patients, including me, because I'm also a patient, right? That we are able to know what our body needs. So for example, if you're reacting tomatoes and you feel itchy or tired, or you have a stomach ache after eating tomatoes, then maybe tomatoes are not one of the red foods you eat. Um, maybe you try strawberries, but trying to focus on foods that grow from the ground that are naturally these colors is going to help give us all of the phytonutrients we need, all of the colors that we need to decrease the amount of oxidative stress, decrease the amount of cellular damage, also um, increase the amount of health and just help with cell turnover, help with anti-aging, which I know is a big buzzword, also heal the mitochondria. So preventing cancer, preventing autoimmune disease. If you already have a cancer or an autoimmune disease or you're in remission, great, you can still certainly eat this way. So our goal is basically using food as medicine, using food to nourish the body, heal the liver and support the removal of toxins from the body. So when I say this to people in the clinic, I usually get a spectrum of answers or a spectrum of comments. One type of patient may say, well, I don't really need to heal the liver or remove the toxins because I've already been eating clean forever. And I also use all organic products. I don't wear makeup. I am not exposed to any chemicals. And to that, I would respond, unfortunately, we are all exposed to things. Even Deanna, my teacher, when she went and did her Genova testing um, for glyphosates, which is like Roundup, she was full of Roundup, even though she's been eating clean for 20 years. So unfortunately, we all sometimes need to just do a reset where we kind of remember what's important for the liver and how can we balance what we're getting. Um, Balance is going to come in in a few slides when we talk about two different phases of detox. There's a phase one of detox and a phase two in the liver. So we need to make sure we actually have balance of both, which we'll talk about more in a minute. The other end of the spectrum is people that say, you know, I've always had an issue with food. Maybe I used food like for emotions. You know, when I was growing up, my grandmother, if I was upset, she didn't talk to me. She gave me a cookie, right? So to me, an oatmeal cookie is like a hug, <laughs> right? And so many of us are like that. So um, sometimes we start with a very unhealthy relationship with food. Um, sometimes we also kind of feel out of control when it comes to food or the opposite. We can sort of get into a scary area of trying to control it too much. And the goal is really to find balance. Maybe, maybe that doesn't happen in the next 14 days, but you can keep going with it. It's, it's the start of something. 
And when I say heal the liver, again, I'm just talking about the fact that even our babies, even our infants are born with a certain amount of burden to the liver. I am surprised at the number of children I see on a daily basis with skin issues. And usually skin issues are a sign that the liver is overburdened, which we'll talk about in a, in a, moment, in a moment too. Here's also a place where you could journal or add on a piece of paper. Do you have additional goals? Have you tried to do some food resets in the past? Have you tried detoxes in the past? Um, and if they didn't work out, do you know why they didn't work out? In my opinion, I've actually never done one of the crazy detoxes that you read about online, like where you drink, you know, um, olive oil and Epsom salts and all sorts of things to try to get like the, the gallstones out. And that's because to be honest, it's too much. It's too much for a lot of us. It will make us feel worse or we'll feel better temporarily, but then eventually we feel worse again. Um, and so doing things that feel unnatural, that's not the way to go, right? Um, it's a very, very common to hear on the internet about people using coffee enemas. Some of my patients love that idea and about half of my patients hate that idea because the idea of doing an enema is just not appealing to them. And that's absolutely fine. I, I don't think there's a one size fits all again, but in addition, I want you to try to think about what are you comfortable with what are some of your goals here? You know, do you have some brain fog or some rashes? Or are you trying to get your insulin resistance down or lose weight? Um, or do you have some anxiety? Are, are there any of those maybe symptoms that you're trying to work on? And are you hoping to see some improvement in the next 14 days? Okay. So I already talked about a little bit of this, but we are definitely bombarded by toxins daily. The toxins accumulate they accumulate in the fat, in the bones, um, in the organs. They don't so much ac accumulate um, in the blood. And that's because the body is trying to take the toxins out of the blood, out of the lungs and basically sequester them. So the body's trying to help. The problem is that we reach a tipping point where for many, many years, our body's been sequestering these toxins. Ultimately, exposure to toxins can definitely lead to obesity, insulin resistance, or type 2 diabetes, hypertension or high blood pressure, um, gut dysbiosis, which is just an imbalance of the good and the bad flora, autoimmune disease, cancers, mental health challenges, and hormone imbalances, and many, many other things. But those are kind of the things I see most commonly. The food we eat either slows down the detox process and makes us more tired or it heals the cells and the mitochondria and allows us to thrive, right? So that's kind of the idea of food as medicine. There's a uh, Chinese proverb that talks about um, he who eats junk wastes the physician's time. And I think that's interesting because, you know, occasionally I do see patients that are eating like fast food and very processed food, and they have a lot of symptoms, but they want medications for those symptoms. And that's where we have to kind of go back to square one, right? And just say, okay, let's start with healthy food. And then if we get, you know, clean out the food and kind of eat healthy food and eat the rainbow, how many of these symptoms go away? We know that there's about 140,000 chemicals in the US on the market. There's new ones approved every year, unfortunately. Um, 287 chemicals were found in the cord blood of the babies in this 2003 study. I have to assume that since 2003, it's even higher. So this is very concerning that we have this many chemicals that really shouldn't be in a baby's body when the baby's born. It just kind of goes to show, um, number one, some of these things are forever chemicals. So if our grandmother was exposed to them, then we're gonna have them in our bodies. Um, things like heavy metals and plastics. So I listed some of them here. I don't want you to get lost, lost in the jargon of all the different types of chemicals or toxins. Phthalates are definitely in makeup and plastics. Phthalates should not be in our beauty products, okay? So one thing you can try to do this week, like between now and Monday, this weekend, is just look at some of your products, especially women on the call, um, and just notice, you know, and do I have men on the call? Let's see. Huh, I don't actually see any. That's great. So, um, 
you know, women are more likely to get autoimmune disease. And we think one of the reasons is because of our fragrances, our makeup, the things that we're exposed to. Um, lipsticks and mascara, especially. Mascara is kind of like Teflon or Scotch Guard. It's waterproof. And that means it's a forever chemical. So if you're using waterproof mascara, maybe that's one change you can make over the next 14 days. But let's make slow, um, permanent changes that feel doable instead of overwhelming ourselves. So maybe one change a week, maybe one change a month. What, what can you do? Um, but let's not get too overwhelmed with this, okay? Um, glyphosates, I already mentioned, this is what we also call Roundup. You know, um, if you've read about the Monsanto Corporation, you understand what I'm talking about. that really is going to get. It just said my internet's unstable. So let me know if you if you can't hear me. Hey, Kate. Yeah, you hey. froze for a couple of seconds. So whatever you just said, could you repeat it, please? Absolutely. Can you okay. hear me now? Okay. Um, yes. Yes. You're you're back now. I, okay. For me. Yeah. Yep. It, put it in the. Oops. Sorry. Put it in the chat if you um, if I freeze again, and I'll try to switch the internet. But right now it looks like it's working. So yes. Yeah, so if you haven't read about the Monsanto Corporation, basically what they've done is created um, Roundup, and Roundup is still being sold constantly over the counter. You know, at the at Lowe's or Home Depot, people are using it on their own lawns. It's also being used for our soy, our corn, and our wheat crops. Um, and even our organic crops sometimes contain glyphosates or Roundup because the wind blows and these huge farms are actually polluting the air. In fact, there's even Roundup in our rain. So if you have a garden, an organic garden, that's great, but unfortunately it's being rained on with some of these chemicals, these forever chemicals like, like glyphosates. So that's why if you're doing the best you can and you even have cleaned up your diet a lot, there's still probably more we can do simply because we're being exposed on a daily basis. Can everybody hear me now? It looks like, okay. Awesome. So um, Laura says, I'm unstable too. I love it. <laughs> in the video, they won't be able to see the chat. So you can say whatever you want in there. Um, BPA is definitely found in plastic. Um, BPB is another form of a, of, of a xenoestrogen or an estrogen-like product that's in plastics that are BPA-free. And we think, based on studies in Europe, that even BPB is toxic. So you have to be aware of all plastics, even things that say BPA-free. Definitely do not microwave them. Don't leave water bottles in the car where they get hot. Um, and ideally, I would prefer that you didn't use any water bottles at all, that you always drink water out of glass or aluminum or something that's not plastic. PFOs and PFAs are um, the, the things I was referring to before that are waterproof, the Teflons, the Scotch guards. If it's stain resistant, that is concerning. Um, the dry cleaning of our clothes is not good for us because of this, um, these are our main, these chemicals I listed here, phthalates, glyphosates, BPA, PFOs, and PFAs, those are our main obesogens, which basically just means that they are chemicals that we know cause obesity. And we know this because people in other countries, like in France, they can eat you know, high fat diets or high sugar diets or drink wine or drink alcohol, not exercise as much, and they don't gain weight like we do in this country. And that's probably because of these obesogens that are in much higher amounts in our foods than we have in Europe because they haven't allowed all this to be, to be okay, to be acceptable. So um, I kind of already mentioned some of this, but we definitely know that fragrances are usually carcinogenic. Um, the ewg.org is one of the sites that I list at the end. And if you type in what you've got, like if you use hair dye, if you use toothpaste, whatever you use that could um, have anything in it, if you type it into EWG, usually it'll come up and it'll tell you what's in it. So I typed in some 
Leopard the other day and actually the Manic Panic was fine, but there was a different brand she'd also used and that one had a fragrance in it that was a carcinogen. So um, you can type things in and check the Skin Deep database, it's called. We know that there's also antibiotics and hormones in our tap water. Um, in 2011, the World Health Organization reported that 4.9 million deaths were due to environmental chemicals. That was worldwide. But still, that's a lot of people every year that, and it's, it's gone up since then, so. Okay, I've already talked a little bit about this. And to be honest, I don't wanna to get to stuck too long on the negative or um, the scary things, but I just wanna mention here, we also know that mold toxins are, are toxins, mold produces toxins. And the problem is that molds, mold toxins are like heavy metals. They're very small. So they're very hard to get out of the body. We usually need binders, which we're gonna talk about in just a moment um, in order to absorb mold toxins. Um, things like charcoal, chlorella, spirulina, zeolite, those can help with getting mold toxins out of the body. Sometimes just, oops, sorry, just food alone won't be enough to get the mold toxins out. So we'll talk about that at the end again. And um, we know stress is a toxin. So this is huge. I mean, how many of us can say we've never had stress? <laughs> <laughs> um, I know personally, when the pandemic started and, you know, my kids were home, actually my husband was furloughed, I thought, oh, this won't be so bad, we'll survive, you know, being in survival mode when you're running a marathon is not the best way to be, right? So some point last August was when I finally was able to admit out loud, this was a little bit harder than I thought, <laughs> you know. So my point is, we all deal with stress, how can we on a daily basis detox from stress? Well, you can take a deep breath. In fact, right now we could all start by just taking one deep breath, maybe inhale count to seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hold, and then exhale all the way. So that's one of the things you can do during the day. Taking a deep breath doesn't cost anything. We often, we remember to ex, sorry, we remember to inhale, but we don't necessarily remember to exhale fully when we're stressed, when the brain is sort of in fight or flight. So keep that in mind. Notice your breathing at different times during the day. Just notice. Notice when you're doing work. Notice when you're on social media. Notice when you're checking the news. Just notice your breath and you might learn something about the body, right? Okay, I don't wanna get stuck on this slide too long. We know air pollution is a big burden on the liver. And if you picture the order of how things come through the body, if you inhale into the, into the lungs, the liver is the organ right behind the lungs when it comes to filtering, the liver is gonna take the burden of all of the air pollution. So I bring this up because my friends who walk or run on the road where there's cars, I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to ever push a baby carriage on the road. I want you to find a trail, you know, especially if you're in North Carolina, there's so many trails and places where there's no cars, but the um, car exhaust, we shouldn't be breathing that in and we shouldn't be exercising right there on the road. Okay, we can come back to this slide at the end. I've already mentioned a lot of these. We know there's heavy metals in our drinking water, our vaccine, paints not as much anymore, but pesticides, antiperspirant, seafood, prescription medications often have heavy metals. Um, there was a study that linked Benadryl to Alzheimer's. It turns back, it turns out when they went back and they looked at that study, it was not the Benadryl itself that caused Alzheimer's, um, it was the heavy metals. And it was, I believe it was actually arsenic that's in the Benadryl. So dye-free, clear medications if you have to take medications. You can have them compounded always without heavy metals. Um, we know that corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup is a toxin. It's not a food. So if you do one thing over the next 14 days and it's get corn syrup out of your diet, that would be awesome. Okay, so I would like you, if you have the piece of paper or journal right now, I would ask that you find a little space to write Yes, you can definitely get medication compounded, Pooja, without heavy metals. Um, I think I kind of said it right as you typed it, yep. So let's focus on this green chakra. I, the word chakra just basically means energy center. So if you're able to, for a moment, close the eyes and picture a bright white light that comes down. It can be 
they're spheres as you picture coming down from the crown of the head down, or you can actually picture more of like a triangle shape. Bright white light comes down from the crown of the head and just see if you can let it land in the center of the chest, in the heart. The energetic heart is in the center of the body, not on the left. So just picturing the center of the heart and see if you can picture this color green. What do you notice about it? Is it a dark green? Is it a light green? Is it moving? Is it glowing? Is it tiny? Is it big? Are you having trouble focusing on the color green? And then gently open your eyes and just write down the foods you can remember in the last three days that you ate that were green. Or if you have a hard time, just write green foods and underline it and then you can come back to it at the end. So we know that the heart chakra is really responsible for our thoughts, our actions. When the heart center, this energy center is really healthy and glowing and whole, we feel like we can speak, speak our truth, speak our heart, our hormones are balanced. Um, we can serve people with love, whether it's our family members or friends or loved ones or people we work for. We can give thanks for our food. We can share meals with others. And the green foods are the cruciferous vegetables, the leafy greens, the microgreens, the sprouts. These are really usually where most of us Americans are lacking, right? And we need, if they're leafy greens, when we cook them, they cook down. So we need more of these to get all the B vitamins and all the sulfur out of the cruciferous. So we need to kind of just take a moment, see if we're getting enough greens, and if not, how, how can you get enough greens? And we'll talk about that in a minute too. So I would encourage you to go through the different colors when you have time on your own. If you go to YouTube and you type in chakra, C-H-A-K-R-A -A, meditation, there's all different ones. Typically these are the colors used, but you can imagine the color that you want. The idea is that you're closing your eyes and you are working on your own power to heal yourself. We encounter things all the time that can damage our heart chakra or damage this energy because we're all really made of energy. And what are some things you can do? What feels light to you? Okay, so I'm not gonna go through the rest of the chakras today, um, but it's definitely something we do in yoga class. We do this in meditation class and you can do these on your own too. Okay, so if we have a high toxic load Yes, you can also take a screenshot. Yep, I'll, I'll send out the slides too so that everybody has them. Um, toxic load is basically our toxic burden or what we're exposed to over a lifetime. And sometimes that includes the prenatal time because we were also exposed to toxins in utero through the placenta. Some signs of being exposed to a lot of toxins would be fatigue, ringing in the ears or tinnitus, insomnia, IBS, autoimmune diagnoses, brain fog, acne, weight gain, headaches, constipation, rashes. So if you have any of those, you may have a higher toxic load. I have a, a small sample size, but everybody I see has a high toxic load, right? And this is kind of what got me into functional medicine was when my 10 year old was diagnosed with type one diabetes, he was one years old. And my grandmother had had type one diabetes, but she was diagnosed at age seven, which is a more normal age to be diagnosed. So when my son was diagnosed, I started reading because everybody in the hospital told me, this isn't your fault and we don't know what causes type one diabetes. And I thought, well, maybe somebody knows what causes it, right? So as I started digging through PubMed and through all the research, I realized that actually my son was exposed to quite a few toxins. Yes, he had genetics for type 1 diabetes, but he was also exposed to mercury because I had a lot of fillings in my teeth um, and molds in the first home we lived in. So, you know, it, it's a learning process. This was, this was nine years ago for me, and I'm still learning new things every day when I read. My goal is to balance sort of the hope and the despair so that I don't just give up, right? So if I read something that's upsetting about some toxin that somebody's dumping, usually a company, then I try to learn what can I do to, to bind it or what can I do to get it out of my body? Or is there anything I can do? Can I petition somebody um, to try to stop this? So we'll talk about um, EMFs and wireless 
radiation in a minute too. Um, there was a big lawsuit that was won last week um, regarding 5G and the fact that um, wireless radiation is definitely affecting especially our children in terms of causing brain tumors. So that's good news that they are finally starting to admit that they knew there was some harm that was going to come from uh, everybody having Wi-Fi, you know, so. Okay, we know that the liver and the lymph system are responsible for detox. What can we do? We'll talk about that in a couple slides. Um, our liver conjugates toxins in order to send them to the bile, which is fat soluble, or into the stool. We need substrates. Substrates are kind of like the glue, right? So if we don't have substrates to get the toxins out, then we're in trouble. Then it gets recirculated. So that's the most important thing I think to take away today. We need substrates in order to help the liver detox. Um, okay, and then we know urine, stool, or sweat is also how the toxins eventually will leave the body. Now, if you sweat, like in the IR sauna, you need to remove the sweat right away so you don't absorb it right back in. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so phase one detox, usually we're getting a lot of the things we need for phase one detox. Uh, not everybody, but a lot of us. Phase two, however, requires more plants. And that's where a lot of us Americans are falling short. Um, in phase two, we definitely need sulfur. So that's the cruciferous vegetables, onions, garlic, eggs, mushrooms, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower. We also need enough protein, fish, legumes, quinoa, meat, gelatin. Can you do this without eating meat? Yes. Okay. Substrates continued. We definitely need B6, which is in the avocado, bananas, and walnuts. All the B vitamins are great for detox. Collards, broccoli rabe, kale, spinach. You don't need to eat all of those. You just really need to find one you can palate and one recipe you like. Um, my kids love it if I take the kale, wash it, and I cut it really small, and then I put roasted garlic in the pan with it. And they don't want it overcooked. Um, so I'm also going to give you guys some recipes after we hang up today. We'll email a handout we have how to help get our kids to eat more greens. But some adults may like those recipes too. Prebiotics and fiber are just going to keep us pooping. Pooping is essential to detox, right? Um, leeks, onions, garlic, and asparagus all feed the good bacteria in the gut. The good bacteria produce things like butyrate, which help us to detox. We can take butyrate in a pill, but it is always, always better if we can get our medicine from our food instead of taking supplements. Um, vitamin C, we definitely need vitamin C for detox. Brussels sprouts, citrus fruits, peppers, raw cabbage have vitamin C. Vitamin E, we know these foods have vitamin E. We know selenium other antioxidants and zinc. These are all important substrates to help us detox. So I'll send these slides out so you can also read those on your own. I really paused with the protein, the B vitamins um, and the sulfur because those are the most important. Getting enough protein and amino acids, getting enough of the sulfur rich foods and getting enough B vitamins. To me, those are, if we wanted to break it down and make it super simple, those are the most important things. Okay, this is kind of repeating what we just talked about, but in a little bit of a different way. So what I want you to look at is, um, let's see, down here in the bottom right, I think you can see my pointer. These drugs and additives and household chem chemicals, all of these are things that slow down the detox um, pathways, okay? So this is a picture of the liver. This is where the toxins are coming in over here. Here's the phase one reactions, which require all the B vitamins, glutathione, lipids, flavonoids, which are more colorful fruits and vegetables. And then this is phase two, and this requires all of these amino acids. Um, Sometimes we're eating meat or legumes or quinoa, or we're eating plenty of amino acids and we are not digesting them. And the problem is we're basically in the stool, there's um, either meat or other parts of legumes like, like lentils that are sitting there and fermenting because we're not digesting them and that's not good. So if you're having trouble digesting protein, Usually those are my patients that like eat a lot more carbs and they don't eat enough protein. And when they give me their food log, I can tell that they're, they don't want to eat meat because or other protein because they're not digesting very well. So in that case, taking something like hydrochloric acid betaine can help with digestion. Um, there's also digestive enzymes and there's also um, things like 
measures that help you make more bile. So three different ways we can help with digestion if we need to, but let me know if you're one of those people that like, you just really don't feel like you're digesting well or your stool smells very strange, much worse than other people's. Um, and then over here on the right, I just kind of repeated all the things we know we need. We know we need B vitamins to detox. We know we need glutathione. We know we need sulfur protein. I already have said this quite a few times, hydration. If we're not drinking enough water, all of this slows down because if we're not pooping enough, everything gets backed up. Okay. Including the liver prebiotics, which is like the leeks, the onions, the asparagus fiber, a little different than prebiotics. Prebiotics basically feed the good bacteria. Fiber is more like the bulk, um, the parts, the cellulose, the parts we can't digest. And then movement. How many times have you just been too sedentary and you realized you didn't poop? So um, trampoline, like an individual rebounder is great for that. Walking is great, dancing is great. What kind of movement feels light? Notice I didn't say exercise here. And the reason I didn't say exercise is because when I say exercise, people overdo it and they stress their adrenals out. I'm talking about the movement that feels fun to you, which could vary very, very much from person to person, right? Sometimes I tell myself, I'm going to take a walk every day. And then I realize I don't actually really enjoy walking, especially not if my dog is pulling me down the street. So I actually prefer dancing. So if I could close the door and put music on and dance for five minutes, that's better than zero, right? So what can you do that feels attainable? Um, and then sweating. A lot of us go a long time without actually sweating. And what can you do to bring the body temperature up? If a sauna is not an option, can you just take a really hot shower for five minutes and then cool it down at the end? Okay, this is kind of just an example of someone moving or dancing. We also want to make sure that we're looking at our food, eating meals without screens, and chewing thoroughly. This is my hardest task for me um, because between having the practice, doing all the things I wanna do for fun, my kids, like I'm so busy, which I hate that term because I'm choosing to be busy, right? It's not like I'm a victim, but I need to slow down and chew my food. I often do that at dinner, but I forget to do it at breakfast and lunch. So I don't want you to, to drive while eating and I don't want you to work while eating. Do the best you can, that's it. But I'm gonna be honest with you about how it's going um, and feel free to be honest with me. Dr. Um, Sachin Patel is a chiropractor in Canada that I love, he's a functional medicine guy. He says his key words are choose, chew, chill, cherish, and check. So when he's eating, he chooses his food intentionally. He chews, he tries to chill so he doesn't just jump up and run away from the meal. He tries to cherish his food, which means he just thinks of something he's grateful for. And then he checks with his stomach. How do I feel? Am I full? Am I half full? The Ayurvedic principle is to fill your stomach about a third of the way. And then the water or the tea is another third. And then it should be a third empty. And everyone I know that lives has lived by that principle is very healthy. So give it a try if it works for you. Again, if it doesn't work for you, just leave it behind. Um, we already talked about movement, hydration, support. Do you have people around you that are probably going to try to sabotage this detox or this happy food reset? And if so, can you talk to them first? Can you say, it's really important to me that I eat the colors of the rainbow these next 14 days. Um, can you support me? And maybe their answer is no, if they're being honest. Um, and then you have to decide what to do with that, right? But can you find people around you that do support you? A lot of my female patients have partners that don't necessarily try to sabotage them, but they also don't put health um, high on the list of their priorities. So maybe having a conversation now before we start on Monday would be really helpful. Maybe not, but reach out to me if you need help. Um, again, have you tried this before and have, what has sabotaged you? Caffeine and alcohol, you know, we use these as crutches. We use caffeine when we haven't slept well or when we're feeling stressed, and usually it makes us feel more stressed. Um, alcohol, you know, it can just be a habit and it can be something that we're reaching to at the end of the day. My question for you is, are you someone that has to be all or nothing or would a baby step, step help? So say for example, you have wine five times a night, five times a week. <laughs> um, can you take one night and just have some tart cherry juice instead? Just a question.
you know, a tea, can you make some tea? So you still have a treat at the end of the day, maybe even take some CBD or some magnesium at the same time or some L-theanine, which has the same properties of the wine, you know, but reach out if you have questions about how to do that. Oops. Okay, we're almost done. So this is kind of just my conversation about poop. And if you've been in the office, we've talked about this. You know, I would like for everyone to have a type four Bristol stool, especially as you go through this, these 14 days. It should be snake-like and about 10 inches. Um, would you describe your poop as pebbles, rocks, snakes, pudding, or soup? Um, the goal is the snakes right in the middle. So type four, there's one to seven. So type four is right in the middle. If you look at, if you Google the Bristol stool chart. Malnutrition. I see a lot of patients that are struggling as if, as in they have gained weight, but they're actually malnourished. Sometimes the metabolism slows down because the body's trying to save calories and save certain nutrients but you're gaining weight. So don't assume if you're having difficulty losing weight, don't assume that you're actually um, nourished. You may actually be malnourished. And the next thing is really that eating disorders are so prevalent in our community. They're also very accepted in our society. All different types of disordered eating is considered normal, um, not here. So I'm gonna do my best to help call you out on that, as well as let's just focus on nourishing ourselves. Maybe if you're someone who struggled with your relationship with food in the past, maybe this is not the right time to actually do this reset. Maybe what you want to focus on in the next two weeks instead is like emotional nourishment or the different types of hunger like Kelly's gone over with some of her um, peer support groups. So I definitely recommend everyone tries a squatty potty. And if you are constipated, have you tried the things on this list? Magnesium citrate first, vitamin C, they're kind of in order. Um, how much fiber do you get? You can certainly use an app like MyFitnessPal or Calorie King. There's a few others now. They're all kind of the same. They have positives and negatives. But um, if you in the past have had more of a restricted eating disorder, I wouldn't recognize, I wouldn't recommend using an app. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to just see how much fiber you get and that feels light to you, then try one of those apps. Okay, sleep. I actually do have a sleep handout that talks all about sleep. And I'm gonna send that out at the end of the call if you'd like it. Um, I find I sleep much better if the screen is off two hours before I go to bed. Can you take 14 days to actually wake up with the sun or maybe just two days to start and watch the sunset outside without glasses or anything blocking? Because that's how we are really meant to be. Then if you watch the sunset, you go inside and you don't turn on any lights. This would be amazing for all of our sleep, okay? These are some other ideas, but I'll definitely send the sleep handout um, after we hang up. And it's just a checklist to kind of see, are you doing all of these things? It has even more, it has about 20 ideas on it. Okay, just friendly reminder that yoga, meditation, um, prayer, adaptogens, pharmaceuticals, even vacation, these are not appropriate fire extinguishers. And what I mean by that is if your daily life is super, super, super stressful and you think that three times a week doing yoga is going to make up for that, it's not going to. If you think, you know, for years you've had a sleep issue and just taking Ambien every night is going to just fix it, eventually it doesn't work, right, for different reasons. So what can you do on the on the daily to kind of lower your overall panic or stress. I know that there's little changes we can make. Um, for me, it's definitely turning off the radio in the car on the drive in. If I listen to the news, then my, my anxiety goes up, but that's just me, right? So what, what would help you um, to just kind of not need the fire extinguisher? And then your yoga, your meditation, your prayer, whatever else you're doing will actually help improve your health instead of just putting out the acute fire, if that makes sense. If you've never heard of EMDR or somatic therapy and you're interested, let me know because sometimes trauma is the source of our disordered eating. So just let me know if you're interested in that. We've all had trauma, all of us. It's just a matter of what's the best way to deal with it. And sometimes we're not ready and sometimes we need different modalities, you know, different types of therapy. 
okay, I always, I already kind of mentioned these, but these are binders that definitely help get rid of toxins, chemicals, heavy metals, glyphosates, pesticides, you know, herbicides. So all of these binders are helpful for different reasons. If you're not sure which one you should take, let me know, you know, send me a message and I'll send you our toxic exposure questionnaire in our charm portal. And that will help me decide which one you need. I'm gonna send out these slides, I promise. Okay, here's my summary. Try to limit your exposure, try to eat organic, um, especially organic wine because grapes are the dirtiest of all of our fruits. Grapes have lots of pesticides on them. Um, avoid using plastic. Definitely do the best you can with the plastic. Um, drink appropriate levels of clean water. The rule with water just went out of my head. Kelly, do you remember the math? Is it your body weight? Um, divided yes. by two, divided by, body weight in pounds, divided by Half two? Half of your body weight in ounces. Four ounces, yes. Ounces. Yes, thank you. Half of your body weight in ounces. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> if you're 150 pounds, that's 75 ounces of water a day. Now, that does not take into account sweating or breastfeeding. So like right now, when I go pick up my kids from school, I'm covered in sweat because I'm standing outside in 98 degrees, right? So you need more water when you sweat. Um, Whole house water filter sometimes is helpful. Sometimes you just need it for the drinking water. Reverse osmosis is gonna be the only thing that's gonna take out some of the pesticides as well as fluoride, um, which we really should not have in our drinking water for different reasons. We definitely need to move. We already talked about that. What about cleaning your home? Are you able to use like vinegar, baking soda, different natural things to clean your home? Um, some of this is a little bit repetitive. We've talked about a lot of it already. The reason I put limit alcohol and why we've talked a little bit about alcohol is that it creates leaky gut. So when you drink ethanol, it creates gaps in the intestinal lining. So now think about this. What if you've done all of the work? Phase one detox was great. Phase two in the liver was great. You got to phase three and you have all of your toxins in your stool right where they need to be. And you're about to have a bowel movement, but then you have leaky gut and these toxins are reabsorbed and half of them go back into the bloodstream. I mean, goodness, that was so much work to just reabsorb half of your toxins, you know? So this is often why people do feel pretty crappy the morning after drinking, um, as well as alcohol depletes your B vitamins, which you need for that phase one detox. So avoid the microwave. I've been saying this for years, but didn't have as much info as I do now. If you need, um, studies from PubMed or anywhere to back this up, I'd be happy to send you studies on any of this because I, I understand that a, a certain amount of healthy skepticism is good. So if you have questions about any of this, I can send you studies. And that's it. This is just showing you what was in your email. This is our two page handout. We'll come back to that after questions. Comprehensive guide is the one, one of the ones you're gonna get. Kelly, did they already get that one? I'm forgetting. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. So we have not, the comprehensive guide, detox handout, and then the sleep and um, getting kids to eat more leafy greens or more vegetables will be sent after this meeting. Today. Yep. Yes. And what about the weekly planner? That was in the first email, right? Yes, the weekly planner and the two page were in the first yep. email. Okay, so you should have the weekly planner and it looks like that on the front. And you should also have this two page handout which is the detox food plan. And it has a dash and a T two P that means two pager. So what I want you to do is try to print this out and put it on your fridge because it is all of the information kind of condensed into two pages. But I also would like you to read through this comprehensive guide if you have time. If you don't have time, just know that the two pager as well as the weekly planner are the most important. Like you can do this with just using those. Um, right, and actually I already had this here after the call, this is where, where, what you're gonna get. And the other thing is the food and lifestyle questionnaire Kelly sent you in Charm this morning. If you didn't get that when you log into your Charm, just let us know. We would like to all start together on Monday and we would really like to, um, to have you fill out the food and lifestyle questionnaire um, before we start. Actually, no, we're gonna do that while we go through, right, Kelly? We're gonna do the so, medical questionnaire first. So I have sent the, yeah, I sent the medical symptom questionnaire to everyone this morning. And then the food and lifestyle, uh, last time we used that day one, two, and three and printed out a couple, but there is a seven day food and lifestyle and charm. So um, yeah. I get, which one do you prefer me to send? 
<laughs> ah, we just lost your volume. volume. What? Can you say that last part again? Did you say, do you want me to send it? Oh, so yeah. So the last time we used the day one, two, and three food and lifestyle questionnaire, and we yeah. printed it and filled it out ourselves, but in Charm, there's a seven day. So, yeah. so which do you prefer? Do you want the one set in Charm or the one they can print? So I, I would like everybody to pick what they want. Do you, are you someone that likes okay. piece of paper and pen or do you want the electronic version? And we can send everybody both just in case. I'll, okay. I'll add the, um, the three day to the email. Okay, I'll do that. No problem. We'll send you both just in case, but know that food and lifestyle questionnaire is basically just a place where you can track. You can say, I had this food, I had this stress, I did great in this area. I didn't do great in this area. You know, you can just kind of journal a very short amount of journaling every day. Um, when I, the first time I did that, I realized that work doesn't actually change how I eat. Like if everybody, if all the patients have COVID, I don't actually eat differently. School, when I was in school, wasn't changing how I eat arguments with my kids or having difficulty with them wasn't changing how I ate. But as soon as I argued with, with my spouse, I ate all of the sugar. So it was actually kind of nice because I saw what my weakness was. I didn't realize it was so much more the emotional argument with my spouse. So it was just eye opening because I really thought all of my stress affected my eating the same way and it actually didn't. So, so that's what the food and lifestyle questionnaire is. But what we already sent you is actually called a medical system symptom questionnaire. And the idea with that is we want to see if your symptoms improve just by eating the rainbow, right? So we don't want you to change like supplements or change a bunch of other things this in the next two weeks, um, but do the best you can with eating the rainbow. Okay, I think I'm going to close my slides and just answer any questions. I'll go back through the chat first. I tried I know it's hard because there's so much information. I tried to, to give a little less than usual, um, but I know it still feels like a lot. So I just wanna reiterate that the protein, getting enough protein, regardless of if it's vegetarian source or organic grass-fed meats, um, B vitamins and sulfur rich foods, those are important. And the sulfur rich is usually more the cruciferous vegetables. Those three are the most important things as we go through. Okay, so who has questions and I'll go back through the chat. How do we get things compounded? Yes, you ask me or your provider, whoever your provider is, to compound the medication um, to a certain pharmacy. I love um, Central, I love, well, there's a few ones I use. I use carry compounding for specific things because not every compounding pharmacy makes the same things. I use triangle compounding for other things and I use central here in Durham for other things. Um, should we do that for any prescription medicine we take? It depends. What you need to do is type in your prescription and in Google ask for the package insert. So if you take levothyroxine 100 micrograms, type that in and ask for the package insert. And then you will read in the bottom inactive ingredients. And that's what you're looking for is what is in your medication so that you know, do you need to have it compounded because it's more expensive to have it compounded. Okay. Okay, um, get in here. Any other questions? I got one question about kombucha. Um, and so I was just wondering what what your thoughts on it where i know you know it has added sugar and um and it's got but it is also can be beneficial so so what are your thoughts on that especially as far as fermented food goes yeah so it really depends um when anything is made with tea there's tannins and tannins are controversial in that we know that they can be harmful in high amounts but in low doses they're really healthy um, there's also a lot of different B vitamins in kombucha. It really depends on who's making it and how they're making it. If you could do homemade kombucha, that would already, already always be better because you'd know what you were adding to it. Um, Kelly, was it a specific brand of kombucha or was it just saying, is, can I have kombucha during the detox? Just asking about my, uh, our thoughts on kombucha and is there a particular brand that, that would be okay? Yeah, so I like, um, what is the name 
some of the one that has like the original ginger and then they have a really good cranberry. Um, I like ones that are strong enough that actually you don't drink the whole thing at once. You really only have like a quarter of the bottle because it's like a therapeutic dose. It's the Synergy brand that I like the best. They're not adding corn syrup or sugar to the end product. So it's not sweet. That's my favorite. Um, can kids participate in the detox? Absolutely. My kids are going to do it again. They do it every single time. And what we do is we have a competition in my house because that's what my kids like. We try to get 40 different um, plant foods. So a variety of plant foods every week. And we see who can get to 40 first. My son always beats me. So, <laughs> you know, like lentils counts, spinach counts, eggplant counts, tomato, counts, everything that grows from the ground counts. Um, meats, dairy don't count. Um, you know, whole grains can definitely count depending on how you decide to do it, but I wouldn't count like white rice and things like that that are more, um, the white foods wouldn't really count. So, but things that grow from the ground that are the colors of the rainbow that are more prebiotic rich, especially when you're eating the skin because those are really the healthier foods. The berries that you eat the skin, the apples you eat the skin. If you eat the potato skin, that's really good for you, assuming it's an organic potato. Um, and then how can we make sure we are taking the steps for clean water? Clean water is a big question mark until you test your water. Kelly has helped, I think, three patients in the last two months just know how should I test my water. Um, so if you get in touch with Kelly, she will tell you how to test your water. You definitely need to send a water sample in to have it tested. I don't personally trust just asking the town what's in my water because if they don't know exactly what's going on in the pipes around my house then they're not going to have accurate results so I would just test the water in your house and then you know what type of filter you need because you know what's in your water how do you know if you're not digesting proteins well if you feel very sluggish or if you have like a feels like a brick in your stomach after eating proteins um, or if you're very gassy after eating legumes, then you may not be digesting proteins. Definitely ask me that in a visit too and we can talk about it. Are we saying no to caffeine during the detox? Do the best you can. If, if me saying that like causes you anxiety, forget it, don't, don't worry about it. But if, if you're drinking three cups a day, can you drink just one? If you're only drinking one, can you try to switch to decaf if it's coffee or decaf if it's tea? Um, does it feel light or does it feel like the thing that's gonna stop you from participating? If it feels like the thing that's gonna stop you from participating, forget it, just do the, do the reset with the caffeine, okay? I wanna be really kind of honest that nobody's, we're not judging anybody here. Um, what is EMDR? EMDR is eye movement desensitization and I forget the R. Uh, it's basically a way to go back and relive a trauma that you experienced and um, reset the brain so that when, when you think about the trauma, you don't relive it all over again because the brain doesn't know the difference right now before doing EMDR between the trauma and the thinking about it and reliving it. And the problem with traumas is we often have triggers that we don't realize on a daily basis. And there's a lot of things going on in our subconscious mind that is not in our conscious mind. So again, we've all had traumas. If you're willing to go to someone that, that does EMDR, they can explain it a little better than I just did. But it's basically a way where a trained therapist will help you to reprogram the brain. Um, somatic therapy is different. Somatic therapy, um, is a little bit of just noticing what's going on in the body. When are you holding your breath? When are you tensing your shoulders? Um, specifically emotions that correspond to specific pain or diagnoses. So for example, like I have thyroid antibodies. Um, when I talk to people that are trained in somatic therapy, they ask me where in my life do I feel like I don't have a voice? Where do I feel like I've tried to speak up, but I've been um, silenced? And so we work a lot on like voice and what's going on in my throat because why is my thyroid having issues? So that's an example. Um, some somatic therapists are very analytical and scientific and some are a little bit more like with the chakras and more energetic. So you just find someone that kind of resonates with you. And then information on binders, we can talk about at your visit just because it's very individual to you. Okay. 
Melanie said GT. What is she GT, was talking about Melanie? Kombucha. Oh, is that the brand? Ah, the brand, yeah. I like the Synergy brand better. I have to go back and look at GT and see if they're adding, what they're adding in the flavoring. I don't like it when it says natural flavors at the end, because you have no idea what that is, so. What was the chemical that we need to be worried about in the medication? So mainly heavy metals added to medications, but it can be all different things, depends on the medication. So um, yeah, we can, Melanie, when we talk in your visit, we can also look up each of your medicines and find the package inserts um, and then we'll know. And the pharmacist should actually, the first time you get it, should give you the package insert, but they don't always. Colleen said, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Thank you, Colleen. I knew there was like a re something. Um, Yep, specifically arsenic and Benadryl. Are there any pest companies you recommend that have the least amount of toxins being released? So number one with pest control is why? Why do you have pests? You know, I moved here 10 years ago and I was shocked at the size of those palmetto bugs that will come from the trees into the house. So when I talked to the pest guy, he said, if you keep the trees off of your house, so none of the trees are over the roof and none of the trees are touching the house, this is gonna go better. Um, so that's one thing to talk about, especially if it's those big palmetto bugs, I don't care what they're called, I think they're cockroaches. You know what, with that, let me actually end the recording just